Hello, and welcome to our session on how to apply for the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund. In this video, we will walk through the application system itself, show you how it works, and discuss how to prevent some common mistakes so that you can submit your application easily, get it approved quickly, and receive your award. Before we get started, I want to share the information for our technical assistance team, who is ready to help you throughout this process if you run into any issues or if you have questions. I'm going to mention reaching out to the technical assistance team several times throughout this presentation. Whenever you run into an issue with the application process, you can receive assistance by emailing the address on your screen, ccreliefffunds at trelliscompany.org or by calling 1-833-613-3192. Help is available in a variety of languages, including English, Spanish, Vietnamese, Farsi, and others. The first step in the application process is to receive your invitation email. This email will come from a TWC email address. It will include instructions for next steps. There are some other helpful resources included in this email that you might want to look through before applying, such as our written application guide, this application video, frequently asked questions, and the information for our technical assistance team if you need help at any point. You cannot log into the application portal until you have received this email. For providers who did not apply last year, your email will include a link to register in our system. The link to register for an account will remain active for seven days. We will send one reminder email with an updated link if you have not clicked on the first link within the seven day period. If your link has expired, you can contact our technical assistance team for help. You do not need to apply for the program within those seven days. You just need to register for an account. Separately, if you applied for the 2021 Child Care Relief Fund, this email will include your user ID that you used to log into the system last year and the email address associated with that user ID. You must use the same user ID to log into the system. If you have forgotten your user ID, you will be able to see it and reset it. If you have forgotten your password, you will also be able to reset it. I am going to start the process by walking through how to set up the account within our system. Remember, if you are a new provider, you will need to do this within seven days of receiving your email. And if your link has expired, please contact your, our technical assistance team so that they can resend your invitation. To set up your user ID, First, add your first and last name. For your email address, we recommend that you use your email address on file with child care regulation, which should be where your invitation link was sent. You can also use the email address of the controlling person for your business who is filling out the application. Next, create a user ID and password that you can remember, but others can't guess you need to make sure that your password matches all of the requirements listed. Make sure to write down your user ID and password somewhere safe where you will be able to find it again. You might not be able to finish your application in one day or might not be interested in starting it today. You may want to log back into the system in the future to check your status of your application after you submit. You will need to log back into the system at least once every three months for reporting purposes, which I will detail later. So for all of these reasons, it is very important to keep your user ID and password somewhere safe. Next, you will be asked to choose some security questions. These will be asked for if you need to reset your password in the future. 
Finally, click the button at the bottom that you are not a robot. Then hit next. Whether you are a new or returning customer for the Child Care Relief Funds, this is the screen that you will see to log into the system. Enter your information, including your user ID and your password. Then click Log On. If you have forgotten your password or your user ID, you will see the following error message. If you have forgotten your user ID, click the button on the bottom left. If you have forgotten your password, click the button on the bottom right. You may also view our user guide for password reset instructions. If you would like help in Spanish or Vietnamese, click the buttons on the top right of your screen. Once you have successfully logged onto the system, the first page you will see is the funding application information page. This page includes some details about the Child Care Relief Fund, including eligibility requirements, application instructions, how funding is calculated, and allowable uses of funds. For example, you see in the application instruction section that you will need the following to complete your application the child care program name and licensing number or operation ID, as well as the location and mailing address of your program. The name and role of the controlling person who is completing the application and child care program payee information, such as the ownership code. We will go into greater detail about this once we are asked for this information on the application itself. Next, you can see how funding is calculated. And you can see how you can use your 2022 relief funds. For more information on these topics, click on the link to bring you to our frequently asked questions. At the bottom of the page, under next steps, there is a link to the terms and conditions of the award. Please read through the terms and conditions carefully before you begin the process, as it details critical information that you should be aware of before applying for the funds. You will have another chance to read through the terms and conditions during the application process. In fact, the very last step of this entire application process will be reading through the terms and conditions one last time and certifying that you agree to the state and federal requirements of this program. So we will come back to the terms and conditions later. For now, you must certify that you will spend your award only on allowable expenses. If you agree to this, click the checkbox. Then hit submit. The next page you will see is the program validation, where you must confirm your program's identity and eligibility. The information on this page that you enter must match your licensing information that is in the child care regulation system, or you will not be able to move past this step. First, add your operation number, also known as your licensing number. Make sure you enter it correctly. After doing so, your program's funding amount and your operation name will automatically populate. Make sure that the program name matches the program that you are applying for. Next, add your role from the drop-down menu. This is your job with the child care program. Then, add your first and last name. Lastly, enter the zip code where child care is provided. 
Once this information is entered correctly, hit validate. If you have entered your information correctly, you will be brought to the application, which will be completed in eight steps. Step one is general information. This page asks you to verify or add certain information about your program. In most cases, your childcare program name, operation ID, location address, and contact information is automatically populated. This is why it is very important to make sure that your information is accurate within the childcare regulation system before you apply. If any information listed on this page is incorrect, stop the application process and update your information with childcare regulation before moving ahead. Then contact the technical assistance team to verify these changes have been made. If you move forward with incorrect information, you will face significant delays in receiving your funding or having your application approved. So the first step on this page is to verify all information. As long as the information is correct, add your phone number here at the bottom. Then hit next. The next page you will see is information about the legal entity applying for this funding you will be asked to add identification information, including one of the following, EIN or employee identification number, which is issued by the IRS. You will use this in most cases other than when the business is an individual recipient. SSN or social security number, which is issued by the Social Security Administration. You will use this if you are an individual recipient or sole owner without an EIN. Or an ITIN or Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. This is rarely used and is issued by the Internal Revenue Service. You will also enter your legal entity name and confirm your doing business as name and add your phone number. Next, review your pre-populated mailing address. This is how your check will be addressed and where your payment will be mailed. You can view how your check will appear in the sample check image below. Please note that this is a sample check used for verifying mailing addresses only. If the address is listed correctly in both places, select the checkbox stating that you agree that your mailing address is accurate. If your mailing address is not listed correctly, stop the application process and update your information with childcare regulation before moving ahead. You may hit save for later at the bottom of your page if you need to stop this process. If you move ahead with incorrect mailing information, you will face significant delays in receiving your funding. Next, using the ownership code drop-down menu, select the option that best describes your business. This ownership type selected will affect the subsequent information that you are required to enter about your child care program. If you are unsure of your ownership type, you can review the list to learn more about the different types. Examples of some common ownership types are a sole ownership, a person with exclusive type, title or rights to a business. This is a common choice for businesses with an owner and no employees. A sole owner files a Schedule C with their IRS tax return. 
A partnership. A partnership is a legal relationship that exists between two or more persons or legal entities contractually associated as joint principals in a business. Partners are not employees and are not issued a W-2. Instead, the partnership files a Schedule K-1 to the partner. Texas corporations are either a nonprofit or for-profit corporation registered with the Texas Secretary of State. This category includes Limited Liability Corporation Texas, Texas Domestic Nonprofit Corporation, or Texas Domestic Profit Corporation. If you are not sure of your ownership type after reading through the list, please stop the process and call or email our technical assistance team for help. Again, press save for later to save your information if you need to pause at any time. After choosing your ownership code, you will be asked to add some additional information. You will either enter your social security number, your filing or charter number, also known as Texas file number. This is located on your certificate of filing issued by the Texas Secretary of State. If you do not know your filing number, you can call the Texas Secretary of State at 512-463-5555. Or partner information for each of the individual partners of your business if you are a partnership. These numbers should not match each other, nor should they match the EIN for the partnership. If you have more than two partners, enter information for any two partners. Once you complete this page, select next to proceed or click save for later to complete at another time. On the next page, you will be asked for some additional information about the program. The first section asks for information about the program's director or owner. This information is required for federal reporting purposes, but will not be attributed to your program and will not affect your application. Select the owner or director's gender from the drop down menu. Select the owner or director's ethnicity from the drop down menu. Select the director or owner's race from the list. You can check all that apply. Next, under operational status, select whether your program is currently open or closed. Remember that in order to be eligible for this program, your program must be currently open and operating for families. You can also be eligible if you are temporarily closed for a COVID-19 related reason, as long as you plan on reopening within 30 days of the date that you apply. If your program is permanently closed with no immediate plans to reopen, you are ineligible for this funding opportunity. If you are temporarily closed, hit the checkbox. Then provide the date that you closed. Select whether you have a planned reopening date. Then provide the date that you plan to reopen. If your planned reopening date is more than 30 days from the date of application, you will not be able to move forward at this time. Next, move to the general questions section. You will select three of the biggest needs or challenges that you are currently facing with your business. Providers who do not participate in the subsidy program or the Texas Rising Star program will also be asked whether they are familiar with each of these programs, as well as the reasons why they do not participate in them. If 
Finally, all providers will be asked for optional information on the previous month's expenses. This is collected for informational purposes only and will not affect your application. Select next to proceed. If you would like to pause and complete your application later, select save for later. Step four, child count. This page asks you for two pieces of information about your program, your availability and your enrollment. This information will not impact your eligibility or funding amount for the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund. Availability is the number of available spots in your program with your current staffing levels. This information will be shared publicly on the Ch Texas Child Care Availability Portal with parents and caregivers of young children to promote availability in your child care program. You can view what this information looks like publicly, and you can update this information in the future by visiting find childcare.texas.gov. Enrollment is the number of children you currently serve in your program. This information will not be used publicly or for licensing purposes. Note that if you have available spots that could be filled by children of various ages, please choose your desired age and do not double count availability. TWC also understands that at times, your enrollment could exceed your licensed capacity, but please enter the current total number of children you serve. If you have a wait list for any age group, enter zero. You will enter this information for all of the age groups that you serve, including infants, toddlers, preschool age children, and school age children. Once you have filled this page out, hit next to proceed or save for later to pause. The next page is a summary page. However, if you applied for the 2021 Child Care Relief Fund, you will see one additional step before this page. This step will ask you information about how you spent your 2021 Child Care Relief Fund. This information is only used for informational purposes and will not impact your 2022 application or funding. If you do see this screen, select from all of the categories where you have used your 2021 fund. You will also report on where you use the most of your 2021 funds. You will also be asked to share how those funds helped your program. Once you have filled out all of the ways that you spent your 2021 funds, you will hit next. You will then be brought to this summary page. Once you are on this summary page, you will see all of the information that you have verified or added so far throughout the application process. Review all of this information very closely to make sure one more time that it is accurate. If any information is inaccurate, please stop the application process, update your information with child care regulation, and then contact our technical assistance team to verify these changes have been made. If any of this information is correct, you will fit incorrect. You will face significant delays in having your application approved and receiving your funding. If you would like to pause and print review later, you can click save for later. You can also print this page if you would like to review at a different time. Once all of this information has been verified, you can select next to proceed.
On the very last page of the application process, you will find the terms and conditions of the award. Read through this page carefully. You may also click the print button at the top of your screen to print the page. By agreeing to the terms and conditions and submitting an application for the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund, you certify that all information provided as part of the application is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and that you have read and that you will comply with each of the requirements listed on the page. For example, you must commit to remaining open through May 2023 to spend your award only on allowable uses of funds, to adhere to the reporting requirements and record retention policies, and agree to be monitored if selected. There are also four required certifications at the bottom of the page that you must agree to. The first three are federal requirements that I mentioned earlier. The first is the health and safety practices certification. When open and providing services, you must implement policies in line with guidance and orders from state and local authorities and to the greatest extent possible, implement policies in line with the guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. Providers who are in good standing with childcare regulation regarding their health practices will meet this requirement. Your relief funding can also be used to meet health and safety practices. Number two is the wage and benefit certification. For each staff member, you must pay at least the same amount in weekly wages and maintain the same level of benefits for the duration of your award. Providers may not involuntarily furlough any employees from the date of application through the duration of your award. Providers who accept relief funding agree to keep the same level of wages and benefits for their employees. Relief funding can be used to supplement employee pay and provide temporary salary or benefit enhancements. This is easy to show by comparing your payroll records for any W-2 employees at the time of application with your payroll records from a later date at any time during the funding period. Number three. Number three is the tuition relief certification. To the extent possible, recipients shall provide relief from co-payments and tuition payments for the families enrolled in the provider's program, prioritizing relief for families struggling to make these payments and for those making under 85% of the state median income for a family of the same size. Providers accepting relief funding are encouraged to use funds for tuition assistance for families where needed. For more information, you can use our guide on creating a tuition assistance policy for families. And as always, you can reach out to a free business coach for help on this specific topic on childcare.texas.gov. Lastly, you must certify that the person applying is legally authorized to do so. Finally, Select from the drop-down menu to indicate if you have received help with your application. If you did, you will be asked to fill out information from the person who did help you in case we need to contact you in the future. Once you are ready to submit your application, you will certify that you have read and agreed to the terms and conditions and once again, that you are authorized to submit this application. You will enter your full legal name. Then you will enter your email address and your phone number. Once you have done so, click Submit. After hitting submit, you will receive a confirmation message pop-up asking you to certify one last time that the information you are submitting is true and noting that you could be held liable for any false information provided. 
If you agree, select the box and hit accept. In some cases, when a lot of providers are in the system, you will see an error message that there was a process sub a problem submitting your application. You can try again. If the issue persists with the network, please contact our technical assistance team to receive help. Congratulations. You have now successfully applied for the Child Care Relief Fund 2022. This is the next page you will see. It is the active application list. You can view your application on the app active application page, which can be found on the left side of your navigation screen. Each unique application can be identified by the application ID number, child care program name, operation ID or permit number, and mailing address. This is where you will see the status of your application. If approved, you can also see the total amount awarded as well as how much you have remaining. This year, your total award amount will be split across four equal payments, which will be issued three months apart from each other. Once your application has been approved, your first check will typically be issued in the mail within seven days. If you have not received your first payment in the mail within 21 days of your approval date, please reach out to our technical assistance team with your operation ID number to check the status. There is no option for a direct deposit. If you are returning to complete or view an application once you have already started, be sure to click on the active application list to find it. If you are a controlling person for multiple locations, you can now select new application to get started with another application. You can also select begin new application on the left side navigation screen. We hope that this has been a helpful presentation on how to apply for the 2022 Child Care Relief Fund. If you have any difficulties throughout the application process, please contact our technical assistance team. You may email them at ccreliefunds at trelliscompany.org or call 1-833-613-3192.